Hello, welcome to True Tabletop Painting, my video series where I show you how to paint your models. Uh, if you haven't watched one of these before, the goal of this is to show you techniques to help you get your models painted fast in a manner that looks good on the tabletop, um, but without using airbrushes or wet palettes or any tools or techniques that might be intimidating to a newer user or uh, just something you don't have the time or the energy for. Um, so if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. And uh, if you want to subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, much appreciated and it helps the channel out. Uh, but otherwise, we'll dive right in. Uh, today we'll be looking at Sleeping Beauty from the Twisted Fables board game. For Sleeping Beauty, my palette's going to be relatively straightforward. Uh, I'm probably do, you know, kind of a darkish black for the hair. Um, you know, maybe kind of a dingy dark gray for the uh, gown. I don't really want to go with a bright white. Uh, I think the darker looking hospital gown kind of, you know, goes better with the vibe of the game. And then just some brown for the belts and, you know, uh, some kind of uh, light flesh tone for the skin. So I'm starting off by painting the belts uh, using snake bite leather. It's kind of my, one of my default browns in the contrast line. I really like the way it looks um, and, you know, really does kind of give you that impression of leather pretty easily. So uh, I'm not really worried uh, more than just, you know, doing my best to stay in the lines. I'll be cleaning it up again later with a little bit of wraith bone once we're done with this step. Now I'm switching over to the hair. Uh, I'm going to be starting with Black Templar as my kind of base shade. Uh, whenever I'm painting black hair or just really dark hair, I like to do um, you know Black Templar. It doesn't cover everything well. You can see a lot of white through it, but then when I do the contrast highlighting, um, it covers that up nicely and gives a, a little bit of a layered effect, which I like. After the hair, I'm gonna clean up the edges with Wraith Bone just so I'm ready for uh, the next stages of the model. Uh, I also noticed I missed a section of the straps with some of the snake bite leather, so I'm just going back and hitting that last little missed spot uh, before I move on. You can see the belts and the hair are pretty much ready to go. Um, you know, the shading from the contrast already starts to look good. Um, right now I'm gonna move on to the skin tones and get that layer down. For the skin tone, I'm doing Dark Oath as my base color. Um, I actually meant to do Gillywon Flesh, um, but uh, I forgot what I was doing and which shade was which, and so Dark Oath it is. And with all the contrast painting right now, uh, my goal is really just trying to stick as much in the lines as I can, um, but not worrying too much uh, otherwise. So with the skin tone down, you can see the model looking much closer to completion. Um, definitely shows why I don't really like the white on the uh, the gown. It's just definitely super bright. I mean, I haven't painted it yet, but if I kept it white, I just don't like how bright it would look against everything else. So I'm just going to clean up the uh, edges a little bit again around the flesh tones, and then we'll move on to the uh, gown. For the hospital gown, I'm going with Space Wolves Gray. Uh, I didn't want it to be super dark. Uh, I wanted it to look, you know, kind of dingy and dirty, but not so dark that it, you know, just darkens the entire model. Uh, I also really like the bluish tint that Space Wolves Gray gives to it. So that's what I'm using here. Uh, and you can see I'm doing a very, just heavy application of this. Um, it's a lighter color in the contrast range, so I wanna make sure it really sinks into those crevices and gets the shadows uh, nice and dark for when I then eventually uh, dry brush the model later. With 
space will grayed down, you can see the model's pretty close to being done. All the base colors are in place, uh, and it looks pretty good. Um, you can see the gown is very streaky and kind of splotchy looking, um, and some of the other colors definitely look a little flat. Uh, so this is where we get into the second piece, which is the contrast dry brushing, as I call it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dry brush the entire model with Terminata Stone. Um, I don't try to pick spots on this. Uh, the whole model, all the base colors are done. So I just liberally dry brush everything, uh, knowing that I'm going to hit it again with uh, some contrast dry brushing afterwards. With this first dry brushing done, you can see there's a lot more detail in the model now. Uh, you know, a lot of the highlights are picked up. Um, you can see the gown isn't as splotchy anymore. It, it overall just improves the look of the model. You can see the base colors underneath, but obviously now there's a lot of white. So now comes the actual uh, contrast dry brush that is kind of the key to my tabletop painting technique. I'm going to start with the biggest part of the model, uh, the gown, and for this I'm going to be dry brushing with Apothecary White. Um, anyone who's used this uh, contrast paint knows that it's it actually is kind of very light gray when it goes on, um, and so I find this kind of gives that white appearance uh, on the highlight from the Terminata Stone, but the, the slight bluish tint, the slight gray tint to the Apothecary White helps pick out the shadows from the Space Wolf Gray we used earlier and overall just kind of gives it that still kind of dingy look to it and makes it a very kind of lightish gray, dulling the brightness of the Terminata stone. And here you can see with the contrast dry brush done, uh, the gown is looking much better. It, the colors are blended and smooth. There's less streaking and splotchiness. Um, you get a lot of those good highlights without them being super bright. And you know the colors really kind of blend much better together now that you've hit it with that contrast highlight. Now I'm going to hit the belts. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using the snake bite leather again. Uh, I talked about this in an earlier video, but basically when you do the contrast dry brush, you can either do the same color again, which just kind of solidifies that color and picks out the, the shading and the highlights better. Or like with the gown, you can use a different color uh, that really kind of helps contrast it a little bit more and then uh, it pulls those colors in a different direction. So for the belts, I wanted it to still keep that snake bite leather approach. So that's what I went with here for the contrast dry brush. So you can see with the belts done now, uh, the color isn't much different than what we started with. However, the highlighting is a lot stronger and uh, you still get the shades in there, but it just looks like a stronger version of the color that we started with. Next up is the skin tone. Uh, for this, I'm gonna be doing a uh, Gilliman Flesh for the dry brush. Um, I kind of realized that the Dark Oath was darker than I wanted, um, so I'm trying to kind of balance that out with the, the Gilliman Flesh, but it only does so much because that Dark Oath really shows through uh, towards the end of it. After the skin tone, I'm going to do the hair. Uh, for this one, I'm going with the silicone gray as my uh, dry brush. Uh, I find that it definitely helps darken the, the whites from the Terminata Stone, um, but it leaves it relatively bright and leaves those highlights pretty strong uh, otherwise. Uh, if you go Black Templar again, even if you go real light with it, um, it darkens it enough that it, it kind of kills that contrast. So I like having the, the silicone gray just dull out the, the bright white of the dry brush that we've already done. And 
now you can see with that last contrast dry brush done, uh, the model's practically finished. Um, there's some detail work to do now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is start with uh, kind of the buckles and bangles uh, on the various pieces of the belts. Uh, for that, I'm gonna use Room Fang Steel. It's a nice bright silverish kind of color, and I like that for kind of these smaller bits where it could be harder to see, especially if you use a darker color. You can see the silver in there now. Uh, you know, some of those buckles and uh, bangles and little clasps are now picking up nicely. Uh, and again, just shows up really well on that brown. Next up is the eyes. Uh, for this one, it's actually kind of easy because there's this like glowing eye effect. So I'm not too worried about, you know, getting the pupils right, anything like that. Uh, also, because it's glowing, I'm actually gonna use White Scar uh, rather than uh, Wraith Bone, which is what I usually like to do for the eyes because I don't like them to be super bright if they're gonna be normal. But again, her eyes are supposed to have this glow effect to them. So for this, I'm gonna use a bright White Scar paint to really pick these out uh, in the face. After the eyes, uh, there's just some final detail work left. Um, I'm gonna pick out the knife in Lead Belcher. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything fancy, any kind of different shades of it or anything like that. I mean, it's a pretty small little blade, so it doesn't need a lot of detail. Uh, after that, I'll hit uh, the eyebrows. I'm gonna use um, Basilicum Gray just to kind of give those uh, blackish uh, eyebrows to match the hair um, without using Black Templar, because that'll go definitely a little too dark and a little too uh, cartoony. Uh, and then for the lips, I uh, believe I use Flesh Terror Red uh, just to pick those out, um, you know, give them some, some pop uh, on the face of the model. There's one last little detail I'm going to pick out. Um, it's where the, uh, the belts meet the arms and the legs of the model. You can see there's a little section, you know, it'd be like gauze or cloth to keep the belts from chafing a person. Uh, it's just a really neat little detail they picked out on the model, and it's super easy to highlight here, just use a little wraith bone on it. Uh, and I think it adds a lot of character to the model and, and a little bit more realism to what they've sculpted. After that, I'm just going to slap some black on the base, and then uh, this model will be done. So this is Sleeping Beauty done and ready for the table. Um, I really like how she turned out. Um, one thing you could do is if you wanted, you could add a blood effect uh, really easily. I just use uh, Blood for the Blood God technical paint and just kind of liberally, you know, splash it wherever I want on the model. Um, you know, they have that in a lot of the art for her for the game and some people have painted their models that way. I typically just like a cleaner looking model. So I mean, maybe I'll go back and add some to like the edge of the blade. But for the most part, I like how sharp and uh, distinct it looks right now without that kind of extra added layer to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for checking it out. Uh, I look forward to sharing my next painting with you and uh, we'll see you all next time.